Okay, that's better. Howdy, YouTube. So, my living situation changed a little bit, so I'm gonna talk about my new, um, I guess, lab slash docking station setup. So, also I am selling labor booted X200s and we'll soon have a site for that. Gotta plug that in all I can. So, um, yeah. Since I'm probably gonna call this video Weberboot X200 docking station and lab setup, I figured we'd start with the docking station. So, as you can see, it has a uh, very nice uh, 3.4 ESIO uh, IPS medical display monitor hooked up through DisplayPort. So, since most of the uh, X200S's uh, connectors are essentially just uh, port extensions, Weberboot doesn't cause much of an issue, or Linux in general. And the only issue I've had is that the USB hub on the back doesn't seem to work after you uh, plug it, in, unplug it, and plug it back in. And if you're wondering about how to unplug these docks, it is pretty much as simple as closing the lid and pulling a lever. And then you have your ThinkPad free. So, it's also quite convenient. Uh, you can put it back on. Uh, I typically just type in the xrander commands manually, but you do have the option to essentially make like an i3 key binding for your docking station setup. But if you just type in xrander slash auto, I believe, uh, it will convert it back to one monitor when you unplug it. And like I said, this Ezio 3.4 uh, IPS monitor is quite nice, especially for displaying websites. And uh, I made a uh, C++ sort of blog auto-generation website, and um, I'm probably going to make one later that's for selling Weberbooted ThinkPads. And I guess now to the lab setup, we should follow the Ethernet cord. So, the duct tape is a little bit janky. Actually, it's very janky. This entire Wi-Fi setup here is horribly janky. So, essentially it just travels to the end of the room over there. And if you zoom in on that, we have a 10 port switch, or a 20 port 10 megabit switch, I mean, and above a taped power strip. And finally, at the very top of the window, we have a Netgear Wi-Fi to Ethernet bridge. So, now I guess to talk about the lab setup. So, okay, so let's just pan around the room a little bit over here. Um, this, the top half of my uh, toolbox, which initially held my hand tools, has been converted to a table. So, um, if one of my friends comes over here to work, uh, we can plug him into the 10 megabit switch, and you'll have a place to, uh, have internet. So, also a reason for the Wi-Fi extenders, the Wi-Fi doesn't quite reach out here. So, but it does reach in the upper left corner. Actually, I tested that first with a ThinkPad. So, now let's take a look at my, uh, I guess, sort of work setup, or for Libra booting. We essentially have a Apple IIc monitor over there, and there's a Raspberry Pi in the cupboard over there, a bunch of, uh, that one's in progress, but, uh, 
We have a Weeb rebooted 2.5 GHz X200 on top of a X201 to X200 conversion. And um, that's, uh, I guess, most of my lab. I mean, there's some aerosol stuff, a can of air duster, there's thermal paste. There's pretty much everything I guess you would need to Weeb reboot an X200. And uh, I'm later planning on adding to that wall over there like a place to stack my tools instead of just having them thrown around in a box. But uh, there's also some stuff left over and a dehumidifier because this place had a little bit of a mold problem. And um, I guess that's a E430 which I was going to sell but I kind of, uh, or actually E430s have this issue where the connector in the back will eventually break and I tried to fix that with uh, JB Weld and since the hinge puts a lot of leverage force in a plastic case once it's cracked, it's pretty much done for and, and weirdly the parts unit I bought to fix it up had the exact same case issue. So I would not recommend an E430 or the majority of the Edge series. If you're going to have um, a project going for a bit where you're essentially uh, taking apart and disassembling computers, it's kind of nice to have some speakers. Uh, they plug in through this uh, cable over here to my ThinkPad. So. Down there is the, um, I guess, amplifier. I got it at Goodwill. It's still under its seven day if it fails return policy. And the speakers I found at my parents' house, they weren't being used. Uh, I think uh, the amp draw is 240 watts and the bass is also amplified. That thing has like some internal amp for the subwoofer. It that works well with music, but uh, Normal audio from this isn't actually the best, and the bass is a tad obnoxious. So, rather than that, there's some thrown about power supplies, a bunch of uh, old uh, stuff from when my mom used to work at Freescale, like JTAG programmers and things like that. Um, Isopropyl alcohol for cleaning up thermal paste to refurbish laptops. Uh, new SSD. And the composite out from the Raspberry Pi will plug into that Apple IIc monitor and it will uh, work quite well if you can deal with green monochrome. So, I guess. Uh, in summary, um, that's pretty much my lab setup at the moment. It's a lot less messy than my house. Oh, I forgot the the stool needed to uh, attach the Netgear router with duct tape, or not even router. I don't know, like Ethernet, Wi-Fi bridge. It's not an access point. I, I don't know what to call that thing. But yeah, um, I guess you want to see the. Uh, 2.5 gigahertz Libreboot X200. We'll start that up. This one actually has a uh, CFL panel, which isn't quite as bright as the LED ones, but the X201 conversion ones do have a uh, LED panel from the X201. So, I guess um, this is kind of my lab setup. Oh, I forgot. It has accessibility settings turned on and it has the most obnoxious robotic voice. Let me see. Let's listen to some obnoxious robotic voice. I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. It's supposed to be for like blind people or 
There's a lot of questions you have to ask about that feature. Vision impairment, uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, so essentially this is my lab setup. Uh, and Weberboot works fine with docking stations. Uh, I know the GitHub docked uh, D thing is not uh, Weberboot core boot compatible, but you can just put a little key binding in i3 to configure your Windows with XRander, and you're ready to go. Oh, I forgot. Uh, I managed to borrow a actual Yahoo, uh, or not Yahoo, uh, Hako 936, not the Chinese knockoff I have. And it does function a decent bit better. But have a good one and peace.